Asian women have always been portrayed and depicted as women who are quiet, gentle, and let's face it, let's use the word, the dirty word, submissive, submissive, submissive. <laughs> Okay, there's another word, but I don't want to use that word because that ticks me off. Now, this is a very incorrect stereotype, and a stereotype is exactly what it is. While a lot of them are true, such as us being very kind, very caring, very hospitable, um, asicaso in, in English would be someone who's very doting, okay, to our loved ones, but one thing you have to see or understand about us is on the flip side, we are very quick to defend and protect our loved ones by any means possible. As we can see with some of our fearless Filipinas that I will be discussing here on this channel. But today we'll be talking about one that's caught my eye, um, Trinidad Texon. Now, Trinidad Texon was born on November 14, 1848, and she was the 16th child of Rafael Texon and Monica Perez. Yes, family planning is not part of their agenda. <laughs> During that time, it was very common to have a minimum of like six kids and a maximum of I don't know how many. Um, so she was a clever and fast learning child but sadly had to stop her education because both her parents died early on in her life. So she, instead of learning um, embroidery at that time as influenced by the Spanish colonists, she learned escrima or the Philippine uh, martial arts with arnis and all of that. She also learned uh, how to use different types of weapons, road horseback riding with a rifle and her gulok or her bolo, her itak. So she said and believed at that time that both men and women should be taught how to use these weapons. Yay, equal opportunity. Go, Trinidad Texan. Now she has shown her skills in using these weapons and also showing off her bravery and her willingness to fight um, during that time that her family home was burglarized. Hello, Akyat Bahai. In the ancient times, well, not ancient, but historical times, may Akyat Bahai na. So, ang krimen, dati pa, hindi yan bago. Okay, nagbago lang ang teknik. So, her family home was uh, inakyat bahay, burglarized. So, she kind of mashed and slashed the dude with her itak until he ran away and swearing that it will never happen again, that he won't do it again. So, they were, I don't know, maybe they were kind of like, damn, bitch. I would be. Like, if I were her sister or her brother or whatever, I'd be there going, Girl! Okay, Amazona, si ate. Amazona. She is also known as the mother of Biak na Bato, a nickname given to her by Emilio Aguinaldo due to the fact that she was one of the leaders of the Battle of Biak na Bato and successfully guarded the entry gates of the fort with her husband. Note that this was her second husband. Okay, um, now this, this Aguinaldo moniker baptism is, uh, is kind of like, I don't know, for a footnote, okay? Andres Bonifacio, great as he was, had a touch of male chauvinism. You can't expect them not to be chauvinists, okay? The Katipunan at that time was a society made for men and only men. Like, dude discriminate much so even though it was the first successful revolutionary movement as a society for men only the wives of these katiponeros the ones who joined the katipuna however began to grow suspicious and never ever discount women being suspicious of their men again nangyayari na to noon okay Duda, tamang duda ang mga jusawa ng mga katipunero. So, ano ba itong nangyayari dito? Bakit nakikita kita kayo nagsasama-sama kayo mga puro lalaki dyan? May ginagawa siguro kayo. So, malamang, ratarataratatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatat
So, huwag niyo sasabihin na walang nagagawa ang pagre-reklamo dahil merong nagagawa ang pagre-reklamo sa tamang pamamaraan. So, the wives of the katimer- katiponeros The wife <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's do that again. So, the wives of the katiponeros, however, began to grow suspicious regarding the late evening conclaves of their husbands and objected to the loss of family rest. Kasi nga naman, these guys are doing all of these like katipunero stuff. What the fuck is this katipunero shit, man? You ain't bringing home the bacon. We got 18 children to feed. Diba? So, they started questioning and they started nagging and they started talking about it. And because of these forceful, this is the actual historical word that they use, because of these forceful, forceful familial objections, hashtag nagger, Bonifacio began to bring women into the revolutionary fold. And in fact, it's a little bit hypocritical of him because his wife was already working, although kind of like, you know, the other side, they don't go to battle, they do the logistics, they do this thing and that thing. Kind of like how... It is before when men were hunting and gathering and the women stayed home and took care of everything. Mostly because, again, this worked to the disadvantage of the Spaniards because they looked at women being docile and submissive and can't do anything because they're the weaker sex. It was the women who became the spies that infiltrated different places and different groups. So, lesson learned. Don't put women in a freaking box. Don't tell the don't tell us that we weak because we're gonna whoop your ass. And we're gonna use everything that you do against you. Because yeah, we can. Anyway. So, but if Asha began to bring women, began to bring women into the revolutionary fold, and eventually the Katipunan's set of conduct called the Kartila declared the equality of men and women. So I have a link. The link will be posted. Check that out because that's really quite interesting. All right, moving, going back. Since the Katipunan has already opened the, the organization to women, women in the Katipunan weren't exactly a new thing. Okay, Trinidad was actually one of the very few women who picked up arms and was the first one to do the Sanduguan. The Sanduguan, for those of you who don't know, was a, a blood compact of sorts. They had to write their, they had to cut their palm or whatever. They had to get blood, their own blood, and write their name on the manifest using their blood. This proved fa- oh, this proved bravery that it's blood, dude. Let me just write my name down there. And two, it symbolized a commitment, a real commitment that you are willing to shed blood for the revolution. And she was the very first woman to do this. One thing I like about uh, our, our fearless Filipina Trinidad Texan as well is that aside from defying traditional conventions um, during that time, she also got married four times. Four, 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 four. I know, right? Okay, so first, uh, by the way, did you know that she was 47? When she joined the Katipunan, 47. Only two years older than I am. Um, she got married a total of four times, surviving all husbands. The first husband is unnamed, although some links on the internet say that his name is Sinfro- Sinforoso. 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 Desiderio. But... Records say that those are the first names of her two children with that dude. Now, I don't know. We don't know. Okay, I, I personally don't know. The second husband, he died, by the way. Second husband is uh, Julian Alcantara, whom she fought with during the Battle of Biak Nabato and all of the other battles during the Katipuna Revolution. During the Spanish Revolution, rather. Her third husband is Doroteo Santiago, 
she married him after this whole revolution, the Spanish-American Revolution happened and just became a beef trader or meat trader. And finally, during her old age, I'm guessing Doroteo Santiago kicked the bucket. Her fourth husband, finally, Francisco M. Painado. Um, yeah, that's a fourth husband. And, and she married him during, his, during their I don't know, sunset years. Okay. And she also survived. Aside from surviving the death of her parents at a very early age, she also survived the death of both her children. She was captured and tortured for five days after stealing and hiding the weapons from an enemy camp. They never did find where she hid the guns. So, there you go. For our Women Wednesday and Fearless Filipina, I bring to you Trinidad Texas. And we'll have other Filipinas. If you have any suggestions or if you have any comments about fearless Filipinas in history, um, so much the better. But if you have fearless Filipinas now that you think are should be talked about, please do let me know. Drop it down there. Make a comment. Okay. Or DM me or send me a message. This is Ian Galigas. I'm a fearless Filipina. And I look forward to sharing another story with you next time. Bye.